Okay, so this is a really popular dry sump pump. It's a G rotor pump. What we have is a dash 16 flow meter. We have pressure being recorded before the flow meter. We pump it into the drum. The level of oil is right about here so that the oil doesn't get aerated. This is a suction line, which is a dash 20, necking down to a dash 16. We're gonna measure vacuum and we're gonna measure pressure at the inlet to the flow meter. This is no relief, it's just strictly all the way up to 9,000 RPM with this particular pump. So this is a gear pump as opposed to a G-rotor pump. It has a 1.800 thousand section of gears in the front. It's got a dash 16 inlet. Again, a dash 16 flow meter. Pressure before the flow meter, 40 gallons of, four, of six, 60 weight oil. And we're gonna run this thing up to 9,000 RPM. Go ahead and turn it on. Thank you. that it generated almost 75 pounds of pressure because it's just free flow there's no jets or anything in the system so it's doing the best it can but it had almost 75 pounds of pressure and almost 12 13 inches of vacuum as opposed to the g-rotor which could only pull about five so let's take a look at it on the computer and see what it looks like so here we are over at the computer and what I've done is I've taken the four oil pumps that we've run on the dyno and overlaid the RPM all the way up to 9,000 RPM. You can see on the cursor, that's 9,000 RPM. So let's look at the first small G-rotor pump. You can see that the first small G-rotor pump cavitates around 5,200 RPM. You can see where it turns the corner and quits pumping. So that means that it is absolutely pumping air-oil mix into the engine, and the faster you spin the engine, the worse it gets because now the quality of the oil is really suspect. Bear in mind that a 500 inch Chrysler at 8,000 RPM consumes over 30 gallons a minute of oil. Now if you look at this small G rotor it stops at 18 gallons a minute and pumps no more. So let's look at a big G rotor again a dry sump system you can see that the big G rotor basically cavitates at around 4500 RPM. That stands to reason because both pumps have the same inlet, which is a dash 16, and the larger pump is going to pump more volume, so as a result it cavitates at a much lower RPM. So around 4500 RPM, the larger of the two G rotor pumps, which is the biggest one you can get, cavitates, and it stops pumping at about 19 gallons a minute, and as a result the engine suffers because like we said these Chryslers take about 30 gallons a minute minimum at 8,000 RPM and I don't know what they take at 10. The next one we're going to run is a gear pump, a very popular gear pump and you can see that the gear pump runs all the way up to 7,500 RPM before it starts to cavitate and when it starts to cavitate it's pumping almost 32 gallons a minute at 7,500 RPM. So what I then did was I took that standard gear pump with a dash 16 inlet and I bored the dash 16 inlet out to 930 thousandths from the standard of 850 thousandths and let's see what it did by increasing the size of the inlet about 15 percent so there you go that pump same pump as the previous one the same gear pump 
one with a standard dash 16 inlet, one with a bored out to 930 thousandths dash 16 inlet, and it didn't start cavitating until 8300 RPM, at which point it was pumping over 37 gallons a minute. So it's pretty obvious that where the G rotor pump may have had its heyday, it no longer can tolerate or ba basically be able to, to handle the oil volume that these engines need at anything above 8,000 RPM. So where the other pumps are cavitating around 4,500 to 5,500, the gear pump with that bored out thing, it'll run all the way to 8,500. And, and this means that not only are the rod and main bearings happier because they now have oil, but also ends of push rods, adjusters, springs, anything in that engine that requires oil is going to get a much better quality of oil because I don't know exactly how much it is, but I'll bet you over 50% of the pressure you read on your pressure gauge is air and oil mix with those G-rotor pumps. So take a look at this and see what you think, and uh, if you have any questions, you can call me.